Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're going to take a look at the Cyber Data VoIP Paging Amplifier. Uh, plus, uh, this is actually model number 011324A, and it comes with, or I should say, uh, doesn't come with, but separately, I also have the uh, Cyber Data loudspeaker. Uh, 40 watt ABS horn. This is part number 011068A. So these two things work together. Um, they basically form a, uh, a, a paging, a SIP based uh, loudspeaker. Um, now this thing is seriously loud. Uh, and not only that, you can actually attach two of these horns to the device. So it's uh, 802.3AF for one horn. But if you have 802.3AT, you can do two horns, and it'll actually auto sense if you have AF or AT. I'll show you that in the interface uh, in just a second. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm just using this for uh, you know as a paging speaker, but it can do so much more that I'm not even really going to be scratching the surface on as part of this uh, video. Um, the installation of the loudspeaker is super simple. It's just two wires, and you get your uh, your primary speaker left and right or positive and negative, uh, white being positive, black being negative. Uh, other than that, it's got uh, a volume control knob right here, and uh, it's got uh, power or uh, power over ethernet and network connection plugged in on the side there. Okay, so let's take a look at this device first. Uh, so here's CyberData, SIP paging amplifier. Uh, let's see, provides an easy method for implementing SIP IP-based overhead paging system for both new and legacy installations. Uh, now with up to nine user stored messages. And that's one of the things I'm talking about. Like you can have up to nine pre-recorded messages in the system. That's where you heard in the intro there, I did the uh, that little clip from Airplane. If I dial my Night Ringer 252. Right, okay, so I, so I put in a custom uh, audio file there. And uh, let's see, what else? Let's look at our features here. So G722. Uh, VLAN tagging, um, it can do multicast, oh, 10, it's got actually got 10 multicast channels, uh, blah, 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 blah. So I'm not, you know what it also has, which is really interesting, is it has, well, it has your standard paging, so if I dial 250, which is this extension on my phone system, check, 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 check. right, so I can just do a regular page, but if I dial, uh, but it has a separate night ringer. So the, uh, the Night Ringer, you dial the extension and it just plays a recording. Um, it's, it's meant to be a Night Ringer. Let's see what else. Here is the typical installation. This is exactly how I have it set up. So I've got um, the SIP paging amplifier, I've got you know, my phones plugged into the network, and I've got a SIP server. That's gonna be free PBX. Uh, they also have your speaker connections. So this tells you how to plug in the speakers. So one speaker or two speaker, and each length of cable can be 25 feet maximum. Uh, it says that this uh, speaker will cover approximately 5,000 square feet. I'm assuming that's if you are blasting it <laughs> super loud. All right, so let's take a look at first how to set this up in FreePBX. It's very, very simple. Uh, first thing you need to do is create an extension. So I've created two extensions for it, actually. I've got my CyberData VoIP paging app extension 250. That's the extension for just um, calling it and paging out to it. And then I've got extension 252, which is the Night Ringer extension. Um, so let's take a look in here, and let's take a look at the endpoint manager settings for these two. So if I click on other, we can see that this is cyber data, MAC address, there's my template, which we'll take a look at in a second. Uh, the model number is paging amplifier v2, and this is account one. And let's go look at our other one, the Night Ringer. Click on the other tab, so very similar, except it's the same MAC address, same template, same model, but we're using account two, and that is the Night Ringer account. So let's go take a look at the template itself. Uh, we're gonna go settings, endpoint manager, uh, and I'll show you, by the way, in the interface of this thing where you can actually set it up manually just using SIP account information if you don't have the free PBX endpoint manager, but like I always say, the endpoint manager just makes your life so much easier. So let's go take a look at Cyberdata brand. And we're going to click on the CyberData default template. Uh, okay, and so then we've got Paging Amplifier V2. That's the one that I'm using here. Nothing to it. So there's no settings that you can do in the Endpoint Manager. It's just basically going to take these settings, which is my time zone, and of course the SIP 
server, right? So the SIP accounts. Um, account one on this device is the main account. Account two is the Night Ringer. Okay, so basically, uh, you set up your endpoint manager, attach it to the extension of the free PBX, like I demonstrated, and then use DHCP option 66 on your network to get this to point at the free PBX. Let's go take a look at the CyberData VoIP paging AMP interface here. Okay, so here we go. One interesting thing about this device is that the endpoint manager does not set the default username and password. Uh, normally, endpoint manager sets it to 222222 as the password. Uh, in this case, it does not set the password, so it's just admin, admin, even after it's been configured by the endpoint manager. Uh, you can export or import your settings for you know duplicating those onto other devices. If we click on the device tab, here we can see our volume settings. So we can basically set the volume statically or we can use the little volume knob on the side here. So you can like disable the volume control knob and then set the actual volume. Uh, there's also a volume boost of plus four dB, which makes it like super, super, super loud. I'm gonna turn mine down actually. A couple of other settings, you know, this is interesting. This um, device, if you look at these little um, green, uh, I guess, screw down, uh, whatever you call them, like what connections, um, there are connections for relay. And like if I dial the paging extension 250 send, and I punch in the DTMF code for relay, which is one, two, three. I don't know if you can hear that on the mic, but it clicks. Um, so it is activating a relay. So you even though this is just paging out, I'm actually live on the pager test, 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 check, 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 test, test, test. So I am paging out, but I can also activate a relay with DTMF. So I'm not really sure uh, in a paging environment where you would use that. I mean, I guess, I don't know. I mean, because normally when I think about a relay, there's a box somewhere when someone hits a button, like, hey, I need to get into this door or I need to get into this gate. So they press a button, it rings through to like a ring group and then someone picks up and they're like, oh, you need to get in. Okay, here you go, here's the code. And it unlocks the gate or opens the door. Uh, so where you would use a relay in a paging system, I don't know, but it is there. Um, there's also, uh, if you pull off this little plate right here, um, there is a spot for adding one of the CyberData strobes. So you can have this uh, strobe, uh, a big flashing light while you're paging, which is also pretty cool. Um, okay, so here's device name. Here we see the power settings. 802.3AT was not detected because I have it plugged in and powered up with 802.3AF. Uh, this, by the way, is only PoE. There is no, um, there is no separate uh, power for this device at all. You'd have to use a PoE injector if you didn't have uh, a PoE switch. All right, let's take a look at some of the other settings. Network is all pretty standard stuff. There's your VLAN settings, your static versus DHCP settings. We click on SIP. This is where you would set the device up manually if you didn't have the endpoint manager. So your server, uh, SIP server IP or FQDN, user ID, auth ID, here's the password. And that's really all there is to it. Just make sure you enable SIP and register with a SIP server. Uh, you can also do register to up to two additional backup SIP servers. And then here's your night ringer settings, same thing. So SIP server and then username, password, et cetera, et cetera. And you can check the box to enable the night ringer. Again, the night ringer is just something where when you dial the extension, in this case, the extension is 252, it plays an audio file. By default, it's a ring ring. Um, but in my case, I changed it to that uh, airplane uh, quote. Okay, we click on multicast and I'm gonna get into multicast in a future video. I'm gonna do a video on the SIP paging server, the CyberData SIP paging server, and I'll dig more into multicast. But you can see here that you can have up to 10 multicast IP addresses in here. And, uh, and then, you know, 10 different, you can be a part of 10 different multicast groups, basically. Okay, so here's our sensor. And I don't know what the sensor is. So the sensor, is this a magnetic sensor? Is this a temperature sensor? Is it a, uh, a motion detector? I don't know. But you can um, add a sensor to the device and then the sensor can activate a relay. So again, this is, I'm just touching the surface on what you can do with this thing because I don't really know all the ins and outs of it. I use it pretty much just for a pager. Here's your audio files. So you've got up to 10 custom audio files. Apparently there is a way to dial into this 
device and then enter a DTMF code between you know zero and nine to play an audio file. I have not figured out how to do that though, um, so I'll probably have to get with the uh, uh, the sales engineers over at Cyberdata to see if they can help me figure that out. And then of course you can see down here I set my night ring to this uh, pinch hitting for Pedro Borbone uh, wave file. Uh, events, this is for logging events in the system, and then auto provision. Um, right now we've got it set up to DHCP, so you can see right here in the auto provisioning log, found option 66 in DHCP server, found its configuration file, and blah blah blah. So there's some, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, logging going on there as well. And that's really all there is to it. Maybe I should say it in here. And that... that. And that's, and that's really, really all there is all to there it. Is to it. <laughs> so, so again, really again, cool really loudspeaker. Cool loud Let's crank it and see how loud we can get it here. All right, I'm gonna put it down. So there's the feedback. Sorry, why am I talking in there? Sorry for anyone that was on headphones, but yeah. So again, this thing can get super, super, super loud, and you can even have two of these horns attached to it. I'm not sure how much the horns are. Let's see, what's the MSRP on these horns? Let me find that real quick. There we go. Okay, so mini horn loudspeaker, $76. So about 550 bucks for the paging device. Uh, that's MSRP. I mean, no one pays MSRP. Uh, 550 for the paging device, 75 bucks, 76 bucks for the speaker. And you've got a really nice, loud, SIP-based paging system that can also do multicast. Okay, so that's it for the Cyberdata VoIP Paging Amp 011324A. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching. Okay, so I don't have to do one more quick test. You can see I've got the loudspeaker sitting outside my door here, and I'm gonna try to walk far away. Uh, I've got it set up so that from my phone, uh, I have a soft phone attached to my free PBX, and I can dial the extension of the loudspeaker, and I'm gonna walk kind of far away here and see uh, how loud this thing uh, actually is. Okay, there we go. I've got it actually right outside this door right here. And so let's call it and see if we can hear it. I've got my good mic on top of the camera. Let's go ahead and give it a buzz. Hopefully I'm not out of Wi-Fi range. All right, so I could hear it. I don't know how much that got picked up. There it goes again. And that call. So I don't know how uh, loud that picks up on the camera, but I could definitely hear it and I'm probably I'm probably 30 yards away outside, so you figure uh, indoor environment, it would probably be a lot better. Uh, plus, there's also that uh, extra setting for bumping the gain, another 4 dB, which I do not have turned on. This is just without the extra volume boost. Okay, one more test. I actually want to call it because I, it occurred to me as I was doing that last test that maybe the wave file I uploaded isn't at the maximum volume also. So I'm gonna do one more test where I'm just gonna call the paging extension, I'm gonna do it from behind the microphone, and I'm gonna do a test page to hear what it sounds like full volume. All right, so here we go. Test, test, test. We are testing, we are testing the paging, the paging speaker. speaker. Testing the paging, the paging speaker. speaker. Test, test, test. 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 Okay, so I don't know if you could pick up my voice, you could pick up the speaker. Uh, it is still actually paging quite clearly at this distance, again, about 30 yards or so. Um, I can definitely hear it. Certainly if you had two of these speakers on there and you did the volume boost, you could get a lot more out of it. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this extra testing. I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend and we will see you in the next video.